So this is the Adobe Connect room that I used twice for a webinar for faculty on instructional rubrics just to see how the um, concept of uh, a live webinar would work, but I was also recording it so that we could use it as an on-demand webinar in the future. That didn't work out too well. The recording was uh, glitchy, uh, didn't record the audio very well, and you know that may have been some settings that I needed to change, um, but uh, at any rate, it, it was an interesting experiment, and uh, I did get about seven to ten faculty attending each one of the webinars. And then later on, I turned this webinar into a narrated Prezi, and I'll give you the link at the end of this recording. So I, it's just a simple room setup. I started out by having a uh, poll on the screen hiding the opening slide, and uh, it's a multiple answer poll just to get the faculty who were uh, coming into the room to think about how they had used rubrics in their own teaching and grading. So they could have uh, said that they always had a rubric beside them when they graded, and you'll see that it's a nice poll that broadcasts the live results as people are choosing their answers. Uh, they could have said that they give a graded copy of the rubric to students, that they distribute rubrics to students at the beginning of an assignment, that they discuss the rubric with students at the beginning of an assignment, that they consider students' suggestions when developing a rubric, and, you know, I don't know if you can tell, but these uh, statements kind of move in a progression towards the ones that have least involvement with students' opinions uh, to the one that would have the most. And then the very last one, I have never used a rubric. So anything that uh, an attendee would check would show up over here in the broadcast results. And since currently I'm the only attendee, um, it just sort of all shows up as 100%. And then uh, what I would have done when I came into the room would be to close the poll and to talk about those uh, statements and to talk about how um, the ideas behind those statements were going to come up in the webinar. So then I would hide the poll and they would see the opening title slide. I only have two PowerPoint slides in this presentation. It's not a PowerPoint presentation. Um, one is just the opening title slide, and then the second one is lists the objectives of the webinar. And so then I would go over these objectives, expanding on them a little bit. And then stop sharing that. And then the rest of the webinar would be me sharing things from my screen. So sometimes I would be sharing websites and I'd have a, a pod over here with uh, links to the websites that we were going to go to. And that would give um, the faculty who were attending a chance also to uh, click on those links on their own computers uh, and to save those for future use. And then in the file share pod, I had a variety of different types of rubrics, and I shared each one of those from my computer desktop uh, as we discussed the purposes of rubrics and the types of rubrics. Um, so um, they're not necessarily in this pod in the list that we would discuss them, um, but faculty could download them from this pod. So the first one that we uh, always discussed was a, an article from a journal. Uh, I don't have it on, on this uh, screen right now, but um, as I said, you can go to the Prezi at the end of this recording. So the first one I would open would be this article from a journal on how to use rubrics, and that kind of set up the whole scheme of the rest of the um, webinar. And then we would go through the different types of rubrics that were uh, people might be familiar with and some that might be new to them. And there is a chat pod as well, so um, some faculty took advantage of that. Uh, it seemed some, some faculty, and this may have been the fault of their own computers, some faculty had trouble with the sound 
in that there was a long delay between what I was saying and what would appear uh, uh, come through on their computer so that they might see a document and then whatever I was saying uh, might not show up until later. So a few people did have problems with that, but um, they also commented that uh, they still found it useful when the, the audio caught up. They still found it useful to listen to. Uh, and then I did take questions and answers at the end of the webinar, and, um, and that worked out pretty well too, which was pretty much what I wanted the, the webinar to be, a, a presentation of the concepts some uh, look at some documents and some links and uh, then some questions and answers. So all in all I was happy with it. I think it was a pretty good uh, setup and experiment. Um, in the uh, offices where I worked we didn't set up any more live webinars after that and you know I think it was just a matter of um, what anybody preferred to do. I wanted to give it a try uh, in my apartment in the evening. I thought it, you know, rather than me staying at work late and expecting faculty to travel to my campus for a uh, regular workshop, uh, I wanted to see whether um, there would be any demand for faculty to be able to participate in a kind of a workshop from home. So I'll, I'll end this um, look at the uh, connect room where I conducted this webinar and give you a link to the narrated Prezi um, to give you a better idea of what actually happened in the webinar.